What's up, guys? This is your boy DZD, aka the Drink Gang, Purple World Entertainment, live from the Dungeon Palace Studios once again. Thank you guys for tuning in. Thank you guys for clicking on the video. Um, today's video is going to be a Q&A. Um, a lot of you guys uh, really, really liked the last Q&A video that I did when I went through a list of you guys' questions and I answered them based on the NPC software and my knowledge of it. That way I can help you guys out with some specific things that you guys are asking. So in that video, I encourage you guys to leave comments in that video and I took a few of the questions from that last video. I'm gonna leave a link in the video description to that last video if you would like to check out the previous Q&A. Um, but I took a few comments from, no, from that video and also a few comments from my other videos um, after that and I compiled a nice little list. So we're gonna do the same exact thing. We're gonna go through you guys' comments and it's quite a bit of them. So um, we're going to get started very, very quickly. Before we do, if you have not done so yet, make sure you hit that subscribe button and also smash that bell notification. That way you guys can get notified when um, I post content just like this. Okay, so let's jump right into the Q&A. This first question is from Tim Merkinson um that's fire i tend to overthink things when trying to make a beat how do you let things flow when making music i have all these ideas but they don't come out right uh that's kind of like a personal preference question when you ask how do you let things flow um it comes to just you and your mindset it also comes to how well you know your software how well you know your music production software whatever it is whether it's mpc machine logic pro whatever you're making beats in ableton whatever it's how well you know your software and how well you trust your sound now um, when i say trust your sound i mean you're comfortable with your sound um it's kind of like a relationship that's what i kind of like to equate music to in a relationship if you're constantly second guessing your mate you're constantly asking them why this happens why does that happen why does this happen why does that you, you start to tend to over analyze the whole entire thing and usually the really the relationship doesn't work simply because you're thinking too much about all of the things that's being done and and um you're not letting the thing letting the whole entire relationship just flow so music is just like that um if you tend to second guess your sound, always second guessing the things that you do put into a beat, the things that you do on a beat, then it won't flow, you know, it won't flow well. And you'll have problems in getting that creative process to just come out of you. So again, it just all goes down to how well you know your software, how well you are comfortable with your sound. And always remember, some people may vibe with your sound, some people may not vibe with it. But the important thing is that your sound comes from you and it is something that you are crafting. Trust me, if you stay true to it, you will find the people that vibe with your sound and you will build a clientele off of that or just people that want to deal with you on your particular sound. Um, next question we have uh, is from Side Billups. Um, really appreciate all your work. Thanks, man. Um, I have one question. Is it possible to run any song key recognition plugin ETC in standalone mode? Um, to answer that, plugins are software. Standalone mode, as I tell everyone, standalone mode means that you are now using the NPC itself. You are no longer using a computer and the software. Plugins are on a computer and the software. So any plugins you won't be able to use. That's why the NPC specifically puts plugins inside of it. That way you can use the NPC plugins whenever you're in standalone mode. But your software plugins, the ones that you download on your computer, will not work simply because you are no longer using your computer. Is by Tempe mode. Um, how do you pull all your drums on a track and drop them all out like that? It's so cool. How do I pull all my drums in on a track? Um, basically, all I do is um, let's let's look at this beat here that I have loaded up. Um, this track one is my drum track right here. This is all of my drums. So these are all of my drum sounds right here. This is my kick. This is my clap, my open hi-hat. This is my hi-hats. And then this is my crash right here. So all of these drum sounds are on a specific track. All I do is just load them on the pads right here. You know, I pulled them. Um, I go on the NPC and I load them from my browser and just pull them on the pads and drop them here. And it's going to create a drum program. This is my drum program right here that it's created. So that's how I put all my drums on one track. And the reason why I do that is because when I go to track mute, all of my drums are now on track one. So let's play the beat and then I'm going to show you what I mean. 
this track is track one right here with all of my drums on it and these are the rest of my instruments so let's play the beat and then i'm gonna mute track one and it's gonna mute all my drums See, so there you go. That's why I put all my drums on one track when I'm making a beat simply so I can go to track mute and I can kind of mute all of the drums whenever I want to do that. That's pretty much the gist of why I do that and why I put them all on one track. Uh, next question is from Larry Goings. He commented, how do you play the 808 in pad perform? That is a dope technique. 808 in pad perform. Basically, very simply put, you can find VSTs that allow you to put your own samples inside of the VST. If you pull up a VST, it instantly allows you to use the pad perform. So if you do find VSTs where it allows you to load 808 samples inside of the VST, then you are now able to play those 808 samples inside of that VST and pad perform mode. Very simple. I know how to code my own samples to fit certain VSTs. Um, when you get, when you purchase a VST, a VST has its own code that they coded these sounds with the VST. So now the VST recognizes all of the sounds inside of it. I do know how to code sounds to fit inside of a VST. It's not one particular way you do this. And this is just, this is not a music making thing. This is just from my extensive background in uh, computer tech and things like that. I do know how to recode. I do know how to design things like that. So um, I actually know how to do that, which soon I will be making my own VST for you guys. Spoiler alert, it is coming. I will have my own VST for you guys. And It'll be a custom VST that I crafted and it has all of my sounds. You'll be able to download that. It won't be cheap, but you will be able to have my sounds. But that's coming absolutely. So, yeah, that's that's pretty much how you're able to do that. Pay the 808s and pad form. Just find VSTs where you're able to load your own samples in it. Just make sure you get good 808 samples. Um, I'm sure you guys have checked out my sound kits. If you haven't, I do have a Perfect 10 808 kit and it has some amazing 808s in it that I still use till this day. It, they are absolutely amazing. And I also have the striker drum kit that has um, a few 808s in it, my custom 808s. So you just be able to drop those samples inside of a VST. I think some of the VSTs that allow that, I think, I know Omnisphere allows you to load your own samples inside of it. Um, I know uh, the Spire VST from Reveal Sounds, Spire VST allows you to put your samples inside of it. I think Serum also does that. If you guys know of any other VSTs that allow you to, to drop your sounds in it, please leave those in the comments. That way somebody can check that out. But that's pretty much the gist of that. That's how I do that. Uh, next question is from Emmanuel Whitehead commented, how do you create and save effects chains in the MPC software? Um, effects chains. Uh, that's actually an interesting question. A very, very good question. The only way that I know how to do it is to save the, the actual program. Like if I was, this is my pro uh, in this program. This is my drum program right here. So if I was to solo this, then the drums will play. Now I can go down here and put effects on that. Let's say I wanted to put an EQ on my drums. Let's just say for the for the sake of this video, I want to put an EQ on my drums. Now I have this effect on my drum program. I can save my program um, by going here and uh, right clicking on it and hitting save. I can save my drum program and it'll, it'll allow me to save my program right here and I can label it whatever I want. And then once you go back in and you load up that program again, it will have the effects that you have on it. So you save the entire program. And if you want to change the sound, you just pull up the program and change the sound inside of it. But your effects will be there. So that's the only way that I know how to do it. You just save your programs and the effects will be on there. But if you guys know a better way on how to do that, please let me know. I would I would really, really appreciate that. The next is from Marcel Miller. I commented, what program are you using to sample from in YouTube? Um, oh, when I uh, I have videos that I make where I just pull a random sample up in YouTube and I convert it. That's a very, very simple thing. And as a matter of fact, I'm going to show you here. Let's pull up the, my browser here. And this is the program that I use. This is the it's, it's this is free online. All you do is type in uh, YouTube MP3 converter. And you can if you type in that on YouTube, you'll find a ton of MP3 converters that allow you to go to YouTube, drop the YouTube link in here. And then hit convert and it'll convert the, the video 
to an MP3 the way you can drag it in your software and use it. But this is all I use. It's nothing special. You know, just go Google, you know, YouTube to MP3 converters and you'll see them. And they basically all work the same way. You just drop the, li the link in it, drop the YouTube link in it, and you'll be able to convert your sample. That's it. This next question is from Gary Collins. What's the cost of the Skype session? Uh, the live video help sessions. That's what you're referring to. My live video help sessions, uh, the cost of it, um, there's there's not a particular cost. That's the purpose of the registration form. It's a free registration form. If you guys go to my website and you click on the menu, you will see where you can choose live video help session. You can actually fill out the registration form. It's free. And once we receive that registration form, then someone will contact you and let you know based on what you filled out, what will be the cost of your session. And the people that have booked sessions with me, they already know that these session, if you can get something to eat from a store, then you can book a session. We don't focus on getting money from you. We focus on teaching you the MPC software and music relating uh, tips and tricks and things like that. My sessions aren't just for teaching are showing my sessions are for creating music as well i've had sessions with other producers and we created beats i've had sessions with artists they've listened to beats i've made beats on the spot for them and they purchased those beats so it's just a way that you guys can connect with me live you know instead of through a youtube video and you can talk with me you can tell me what you need uh, whether it's beats whether it's help whatever it is so the cost of that is determined by the registration form the free registration form that you guys fill out so head on down to my website the link is always in my videos if you guys want to ever book a session so far we have going on 400 or i think it's about 400 or so that have booked sessions so thank you guys for supporting that um, i took my time and i put that that together for you guys as i said so you can connect with me so thank you guys for showing your appreciation with that and booking those sessions continue to do that and i love to meet all of you dope producers and you dope artists out there i love doing that that's one of my personal preferences i love connecting with you guys next question is uh, from jeremy smith great beat and video quick question are you cutting some of that 1k area to make room for vocals when you eq no, I'm not making room for any vocals whenever whenever you see me doing EQing or anything like that in my beats. The reason why is because when I when you see me guy when you see me make beats inside of the NPC software, I'm simply EQing for any sound that's inside of the NPC software to make sounds mesh well with each other. That's why I work at EQ. When it's time for me to deal with an artist and mix a song, then I do that inside of my inside of my my DAW. And that's when I start to do those type of things to mix with the artist's vocals in mind. But I don't put any vocals on my MPC while I'm making beats. So that's not what I'm doing when you see me EQ. It's not for vocals or anything like that. It's simply to fit the sounds well together and make sure that the beat flow is nice. Um, next question. Uh, this is from Tim Murkison again. <laughs> Now this beat is off the chain. I have a question. I currently have the 1.9 version of the NPC software. As I watch your videos, I'm realizing that I have to upgrade my software in order to use your sample packs. Am I correct? Assuming so. Um, yes and no. To use NPC expansion packs, you have to have the updated version of the software because it provides a way that you can, you can store those. You can uh, drag that XPN file in and um, it will show up inside of your software. But no, you don't have to have the updated version to use my sound kits. I'm going to take you to, let's go to the browser where my sample packs are. Let's go down here to my storage drive. I'm gonna show you with my sample packs. This is the level, the level up melody sample pack. Um, inside it's gonna have the MPC expansion if you are updated and you can use that or I also provide the actual WAV file loops. So no matter what software you're in, it doesn't matter if you're in the MPC software 1.9, it doesn't matter if you're on 1.2, um, it doesn't matter if you're in Machine, it doesn't matter if you're in Logic Pro, Pro Tools, Ableton, you can still drop these WAV files in and handle business as normal. Uh, next question is from Robert Russell. How are you changing the speed of the sound so fast? I'm using the live. The speed of the sound um i guess you're referring to when i'm tuning my samples when i drag my samples in and you guys see me shifting the pitch of the sample very simply um what i'm doing is i'm going to sample edit and i'm using this tune right here see right here it's it's um i tune this up plus four so you guys see me hitting this pad to trigger the sample 
and then I'm I'll highlight this and I'm using the NPC scroll wheel on the actual NPC X itself. I'm using the scroll wheel to scroll through this, you know, up and down through that. And I'm hitting the pad, triggering the sample and scrolling at the same time. So that's how I'm changing the sound so quickly. Um, the last question is from Ivan Anderson. What's the best way to construct a song with intro, verse, chorus, EGC? I'm assuming you mean arranging a beat. The best way is simply what you choose. There is a simple way to arrange a beat. I'll kind of show you. Let me pull up. Let me see if I can do this real quick. Let me pull up the Reaper software where I arrange my beats. I use Reaper to do that. I'm going to pull up just this beat that I was working on. In this beat, this is all of my tracks. And if you notice up here, I have the verses, uh, intro, verse, break, chorus, verse, break, chorus, chorus, outro. So this particular beat was designed this way. But if you look at it, um, this is just a simple way to arrange. All of these are four bars. All of these, these, these different increments here. So from here to here is four bars. So my intro is eight bars. That's two of these eight bars. Then I have four, 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 four for a verse. That's 16 bars. Then I have a four bar break. And then I have a, a, um, eight bar chorus. And then I have another 16 bar verse along with a break it in the chorus. So really all I do is create the intro, create the verse, and then a break. If, if the beat calls for that, sometimes I don't have a break in the beat. I make beats for artists, so the artist will actually tell me how he wants the beat arranged. If not, if I'm just making beats, then I stick to a simple arrangement like this. Intro, verse, chorus, verse, chorus, and then an outro. Very, very simple. That does it for the Q&A. Um, I know the video probably was kind of long, so you know, bear with me on that, but I try and answer you guys' questions thoroughly and move as quickly as I can because I want you guys to get the most from these type of videos whenever I do them. If you do have any more questions, remember these videos are created from the questions that you ask and leave in the comments. I see them, I try and answer them on the spot, and I will also answer them in a Q&A so everybody can benefit from them. Same as this video. So leave your questions below in the comments of this video or in future videos. If you have any questions about anything, leave those comments. I'll try and address them and uh, we'll get them in the next Q&A video as well. So thank you guys for tuning in. That does it for the video. Um, grab my new sample packs. The new ones are the Magma Loop Kit and also the Midas Melody Kit. These sample packs are absolutely amazing. Again, I gave you some serious fire on these things. You're going to love them. Head on down to my Instagram. Follow me at the drink. King. you're going to see um, some snippets of these sample packs and they're absolutely amazing. So check those out. I'm going to get out of here, guys. Thanks so much for tuning in. This is the kid DZD, a.k.a. the drink King, live from the Dungeon Palace studio, helping you out with your questions and answers on the NPC software. Stay tuned for the next video and I will catch you then. Peace out.